Maria Sharapova is a world-famous tennis star, five-time Grand Slam winner, and former number one ranked tennis player. Over the years, she has also remained one of the richest female athletes in the world. Although Sharapova has ended her sports career, the public is still interested in her. Maria Sharapova, what happened to the most high-profile tennis player in the world? Maria Sharapova was born on April 19, 1987, in the Siberian city of Nyagin. After the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, her parents moved from the Belarusian city of Gomel, which is only 87 miles from the disaster site. Maria's father, Yuri, led the teams that repaired the factory pipes, and later moved on to support his daughter's career. While Yuri was in the public eye, Sharapova's mother, Yelena, a doctor, kept a low profile and was engaged in Maria's education. When the girl was two years old, the family moved to Sochi. Yuri, who is fond of tennis, started visiting the tennis courts in Riviera Park and often took his daughter with him. There, for the first time, little Maria picked up a racket and would hit the ball off the wall for hours. In 1991, coach Yuri Yutkin noticed Sharapova and took her under his wing. Yuri Sharapova's friend was Yevgeny Kafelnikov's father, Alexander, who gave the girl one of his son's rackets. It was too big and heavy, but Maria used it for many years since there was no other racket. In 1993, Maria attended a master class for young athletes in Moscow. Among the coaches who watched the players and gave advice was tennis player Martina Navratilova, who immediately saw the girl's potential and recommended her father to send her to the United States. Immediately after returning to Sochi, Yuri started planning to leave for the United States. He received support from the coach of the Russian national children's team and managed to get two three-year visas. Maria's mother couldn't get one. In 1995, Yuri Sharapov, who didn't speak any foreign languages, with $700 in his pocket, went to Florida with his daughter. On the first day, they went to the tennis academy where the Williams sisters trained, but Yuri's story was taken with a grain of salt. Then they went to a screening at the Balatieri Academy on the east coast of Florida. Sharapova's powerful hits and phenomenal concentration were impressive and she was offered to train on the courts for free and also received help finding an apartment. After a while, Maria was forced to leave the academy and then for a year trained on her own. But she kept on winning tournaments above her age level. At seven, she played in the under nine group and at eight, she played in the under 10 group. At nine, she became one of the best in the United States in the under 12 age group. She was once again offered a spot in the Balatieri Academy after they saw her success. And at one of the children's tournaments in Florida, 11-year-old Maria competed with girls two to three years older than her. There, she was noticed by a former tennis player and the IMG marketing agency owner's wife, Betsy Nalgason. She advised her husband to sign a contract with Maria for $100,000 a year. The condition was the return on investment after the tennis player's transition to a professional player. A few weeks later, Maria signed a contract with Nike for $50,000 a year, plus bonuses. For a while, at her father's insistence, the tennis player switched her leading hand and played as a lefty. But at the age of 12, she decided to leave everything as it was and remain right-handed. Nevertheless, good left-hand control allowed the tennis player to change her leading hand during the game and deliver unexpected hits. In 2000, 13-year-old Maria made her debut at the International Junior Competitions, where she received a special prize as the most promising participant. A year later, for the first time, the Russian participated in the International Tennis Federation's professional tournament, but ultimately didn't pass the third round. In 2002, Maria reached the finals at the Australian Open and Wimbledon for girls under 16. She also won the ITF competitions three times with a prize pool of up to $25,000. In 2003, the tennis player made her debut at the Adult Grand Slam Series in Australia and France, but could not pass the first round. 
However, on the grass courts of the tournament in Birmingham, Maria reached the semifinals, which allowed the young Russian to get into the rating of the top 100 women tennis players. In October 2003, Sharapova won her first WTA trophy in singles and doubles at a tournament in Tokyo. And at the end of the season, after several successful tournaments, Maria rose to 32nd place in the ranking and received the WTA award as the Rookie of the Year. In 2004, Sharapova reached the third round of the Australian Open, the singles semifinals and the doubles final in Memphis. In May at Roland Garros, she reached the quarterfinals and in June she won both the singles and doubles tournaments in Birmingham. At that time, the girl was unrequitedly in love with 23-year-old Spanish tennis player Juan Carlos Ferrero, but the Spaniard had a girlfriend who he soon married. On July 3, 2004, 17-year-old Sharapova beat American Serena Williams in the Wimbledon's final and became the first Russian woman to win the tournament. On the eve of the final, the athlete had a bad cold and was too nervous to sleep, but in the match everything went perfectly. This victory allowed Maria to rank 8th among women tennis players in the world. After winning at Wimbledon, Sharapova also won the WTA title at the Korean Open and the tournament in Tokyo. At the end of the season, she became the first Russian woman to win the final WTA championship. In the final, she beat Serena Williams for the second and last time in her career. For this victory, Maria received a Porsche car, which she then sold at an auction, and the proceeds were donated to the Beslan Children's Aid Fund. In 2005, Maria Sharapova defeated the number one tennis player at the time, the American Lindsay Davenport, in the final of the tournament in Tokyo. She also became the champion of the tournament in Daha. In August 2005, Maria topped the WTA rankings for the first time in her career. In the same year, she became the honored Masters of Sports of Russia and topped the Forbes ranking of the highest paid female athletes. She remained its leader for 11 years in a row. In 2005, the girl dated the American tennis player Andy Roddick for a year, but they tried to keep their relationship private. The next relationship with Adam Levine, the lead singer of the band Maroon 5, lasted about six months. A few years later, Adam gave an interview in which he said that the girl didn't suit him in bed for which he later apologized. In September 2006, the tennis player won the tournament in San Diego and the US Open, becoming the second Russian woman to win the US Open. In the same year, Sports Illustrated magazine named Mary Sharapova the most beautiful female athlete of the year. The beginning of 2007 started with Maria reaching the final of the Australian Open, where she lost to Serena Williams. But after the tournament, she again rose to first place in the world, the only WTA tournament win of that year was a tournament in San Diego in early August. In the same year, the girl became a UN Goodwill Ambassador. On the first day, she donated $100,000 through her foundation to help eight youth projects in the Chernobyl-affected areas of Belarus, Russia, and the Ukraine. The following year, she launched the scholarship program for students from the areas that were exposed to radiation, with a budget of $210,000. In early 2008, Sharapova won her third Grand Slam Cup at the Australian Open without losing a set. Soon after the victory, the problems with her right shoulder worsened, which had begun in 2007. Nevertheless, in February, she made her debut for the Russian national team in the Fed Cup and helped the team get to the semifinals. The winning streak continued at the Doha tournament and then in April at the Amelia Island tournament. After losing in the fourth round of the French Open and the second round of Wimbledon, Maria withdrew from the next tournament and went to New York for treatment. As a result, she needed surgery and seven months of rehabilitation. At that time, the girl was dating Charlie Ebersole, the son of a billionaire. The young people often appear together at basketball games and various charity events. According to rumors, Charlie was the one who in 2009 introduced the girl to basketball player Sacha Vujicic, with whom the girl fell in love at first sight. The feelings were mutual, and a year later they announced their engagement. However, in early 2012, Marie and Sasha broke up. Vujicic could not accept the fact that Sharapova was much more successful than him. Upon returning to training after the injury, the tennis player had to change her serving technique. This led to defeats in the first tournaments after returning to to the court in March 2009. 
But on October 3rd, Maria won her first tournament in Tokyo after a break, and her 20th tournament of the WTA. At the 2010 Australian Championships, Sharapova lost at the start, but then won the tournaments in Memphis and Stroudsburg. The beginning of the 2011 season was not very successful, but after a short break, Sharapova successfully performed at major tournaments in America. In Indian Wells, she reached the semifinals, and in Miami, she reached the final. These results allowed Sharapova to regain her place in the top 10 female athletes. Upon transition to dirt, Sharapova won the tournament in Rome in May. In the second part of the season, Maria won the title in Cincinnati, but in October she suffered an ankle injury. In 2011, Time magazine included Maria among the top 30 tennis players of the past, present, and future. That year, Sharapova's earnings reached $24.2 million. The year 2012 brought Maria victories in Rome, Stuttgart, as well as the title on the courts of Roland Garros. Thanks to this victory, she managed to become first at the WTA leaderboard and get a career Grand Slam. In different years, she won all four Grand Slam tournaments. On July 27th, Maria Sharapova took part in the Olympic Games, where she became the first female flag bearer of the Russian national team at the opening ceremony. At the end of the tennis tournament, she won the silver medal, losing to Serena Williams in the final. In the same year, the tennis player received awards for her charitable activities and for her contribution to the development of physical culture and sports and sports achievements. In the fall, the girl began dating the Bulgarian tennis player and ex-boyfriend of Serena Williams, Grigor Dimitrov. After three years, the couple broke up. In the same year, Sharapova opened a confectionery company, Sugarpova, which produces chewy marmalade and sweets. The athlete has invested $500,000 in the business. She's not only the founder and owner, but also the creative director of the brand. She takes part in creating the assortment and product design, and invents and draws sketches of the sweets. In 2012, the athlete finished in second place in the women's classification, and Tennis Channel included her in the list of the 100 best tennis players of all time. In 2013, the athlete won in Indian Wells and Stuttgart, but due to injuries, she had to withdraw from several tournaments. In the same year, Sharapova presented her collection of fashion accessories under the Sugarpova brand in New York, and her annual income, according to Forbes, reached $29 million. On February 7, 2014, Sharapova took part in one of the final stages of the torch relay of the Winter Olympic Games in Sochi. She carried the torch through the Fish Stadium. In the same year, she won the title at competitions in Madrid, Beijing, and Stuttgart. She won the Grand Slam for the fifth time, once again conquering the court of Roland Garros. She finished the season as the second best female tennis player in the world. According to Forbes, Maria earned $24.4 million for that year, 22 of which came from advertising contracts. At the first tournament in 2015, Sharapova took the title in Brisbane and won in Rome, but she still missed most of the second half of the season due to injury. During that year, Maria earned more than $29 million, with prize money totaling just over $6 million. Sharapova planned to start the 2016 season at a tournament in Brisbane, but withdrew from the competition due to injury. At the Australian Open, she reached the quarterfinals, where she lost to Serena Williams for the 18th time in a row. On March 7, 2016, at an emergency press conference, Sharapova announced that due to carelessness, she continued to take Mildrenit, which contains Mildonium, which had been banned since January 1st. For violating the anti-doping rules, she was excluded from the WTA ranking and disqualified for two years. After her appeal, the Court of Arbitration for Sport found that Sharapova did not take Mildonium to improve her results and reduced the period to 15 months. During the disqualification, the athlete entered Harvard Business School and wrote the book Unstoppable, My Life, which was released in 20 languages. The athlete's return to the court took place on April 26, 2017, at the WTA tournament in Stuttgart, where she reached the semifinals. On October 15th, Sharapova won her first tournament after being disqualified. In 2018, it became known that for almost a year, her boyfriend had been the British millionaire Alexander Gilks. 
In the same year, Maria performed a cameo in the film Ocean's 8 and the TV series Billions. Now you move Egret. As she sleep you go. Этого не будет. What do you say? To let you win next time. I told him that's never going to happen. You're way too smart to believe that anyway. You got that right. In the updated Forbes list, Sharapova's total income for 2018 was estimated at 10.5 million, of which 1 million was earned by playing tennis. At the end of 2019, the tennis player took part in the American TV series The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. In the same year, Sharapova took 25th place in the list of the richest women in Russia, according to Forbes, earning $325 million during her entire career. In the three years since her return, Marie has participated in nine Grand Slam tournaments, but has never been able to get past the fourth round. Successful performances at these and other tournaments were often hampered by various injuries. On January 21, 2020, Sharapova had her last match as a professional player. In the first round of the Australian Open, the Russian lost in two sets to the Croatian Dana Vekic. On February 26, Maria announced her retirement in an article published simultaneously in Vogue and Vanity Fair. The main reason for retirement was long-standing shoulder injuries, because of which the tennis player could no longer show the same results. In total, she won 36 WTA tournaments in singles and three in doubles and led the ranking list of the Women's Tennis Association for a total of 21 weeks. In December 2020, Maria Sharapova announced her engagement to Alexander Gilks. He gave her an engagement ring, which was custom made in rose gold with an emerald cut diamond worth $400,000. In 2020, Forbes estimated Maria Sharapova's fortune at $200 million, including her in the ranking of the richest woman in the United States. On average, she earns more than $24 million a year. Most of this amount is made from advertising revenue. Technical sponsors of the athlete were Head, a manufacturer of rackets, as well as the company Nike, which in 2010 offered a record eight-year agreement for $70 million. In addition, Maria has worked several times as a designer of the brand's limited collections. In 2003, Maria signed a contract with the mobile phone manufacturer Motorola for more than $1 million a year. The plot of the commercial was based on the events of Wimbledon. After winning the final match, Maria asked her father for a phone to call her mother and started dialing the number when she approached the television camera for a post-match interview. Since 2004, the tennis player has been sponsored by Tag Heuer, Colgate & Palmolive, Land Rover, Tiffany & Company, Samsung, Porsche, Avon & Evian. The amount she received under the contracts with these brands ranged from 3 to $9 million annually. After the doping scandal, some of them refused to cooperate with Maria. According to some sources, about 15% of the revenue from advertising contracts goes to pay the commission to the IMG agency. In addition to her own company, Sugarpova, which has an annual income of about $20 million, Maria in 2014 invested in the company Supergoop, which produces sunscreens and researches skin diseases. In 2020, she invested $900,000 in a startup that produces fitness bracelets, a company that produces massagers and other gadgets for athletes, and also signed a contract with the Skills Educational Platform. Maria regularly participates in charity projects and as a hobby likes to buy works of art. Sharapova considers her most successful find the Picasso lithograph bought in London. Maria lives in Los Angeles in a mansion with an ocean view created according to her individual project. The building is divided into two wings. The first one has a living room, a dining room, a kitchen on the first floor, and a master bedroom on the second. The other wing is reserved for guests. It has multiple bedrooms. The house also has a ground floor with a bowling area. The design of the mansion is inspired by Japanese culture and minimalist design. In the simple interior, concrete and glass are successfully combined with whitewashed oak, cedar and silver travertine. The courtyard with a garden and a swimming pool forms a single space with the living room due to a sliding door. The furniture is a mix of antique items from Asia, Africa and Europe of the middle of the 20th century. 
In 2020, the athlete purchased a ranch in the Santa Barbara area for $8.6 million. The total area is just over five acres and includes hilly gardens decorated with lavender, roses and jasmine, open laws, tall fir trees, and a dense bamboo forest. The main Balinese-style house features wooden ceilings and loft-style rooms and features a stone terrace under palm trees with an ocean view. Next to the building, there is a small separate studio with mustard-colored walls. The guest house is designed in a Dutch style and has an additional back door. From there, you can access a spacious courtyard made of stone as well as the lawns on the hills. The third building is the caretaker's guest house, adjacent to a stable with five stalls and additional facilities for riding, including a corral for horses. Previously, the tennis player sold the house in Manhattan Beach for $5.25 million, which he had purchased in 2005 for $3.7 million. Also in the early 2000s, Chirapova bought a 6,500 square foot villa in Florida for $2.6 million. In addition, she has a luxury apartment in Israel on the Mediterranean coast worth $2 million. Thanks to good contracts with car manufacturers, Sharapova has an impressive car collection, which includes such cars as the BMW 760, Land Rover Freelander 2. As the face of Land Rover, the tennis player drove a Land Rover Discovery and Range Rover Sport for a while, and then in 2013 signed a contract with Porsche. Her collection includes such models of this brand as 911 Carrera Cabriolet, which she received as a prize for winning in Stuttgart, 911 Targa, 918 Spider, Boxster, Mackin, Panamera, Cayenne S, Cayenne GTS, and Cayenne E Hybrid. In 2010, Sharapova got behind the wheel of a Tesla Roadster as part of a sponsorship campaign, and two years earlier, she received a Harley Davidson Night Rod for winning the tournament in Doha. Sharapova is known not only for numerous titles, but also for being one of the most high profile tennis players in the world. According to official measurements, her screen during a game reached 105 decibels, which is comparable to the sound of a jet engine. Do you think Maria Sharapova should have left the sport so early? If you like the video, please leave a like and also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything interesting.